Frank has in France. In 1957, Frank Hazenfratz was 22 years old, about the same age as many of our graduates who will cross the stage this morning to receive their degrees and diplomas. In May of that year, Frank fled his home in Hungary to avoid arrest after having taken part in anti-communist uprising that was eventually crushed by the invading Soviet Red Army. His destination of choice was Canada. He arrived in Quebec City alone and penniless, knowing only an aunt and an uncle in Ontario. For many, this may have unfolded as the beginning of a tale of tragedy and hard luck. But for the chair and founder of Linamar Corporation, Frank Hasenfratt's life makes for one of the most remarkable stories in modern Canadian business. What Frank brought with him to Canada in 1957 was the technical knowledge and skills his father had encouraged him to develop in his youth, along with an entrepreneurial spirit that would drive him to succeed and build what has become the country's second largest auto parts maker. He has been an entrepreneur and an innovator from the very start of his incredible journey. As a teenager in post-war Budapest, Frank earned money by quickly repairing motorcycles with parts he made himself, and then renting the bikes out before his customers returned to pick them up. You can see entrepreneurship right there. After honing his skills in the machine tool trade for seven years upon his arrival in Canada, Frank realized his dream to run his own company in 1964, when he installed a thousand-dollar laid machine in the basement of a bungalow he and his wife Margaret purchased near Guelph. To limit operating cost and avoid taking on debt, he modified his kitchen oven so he could use it to heat metal to make copper aircraft parts. So that's a sign of innovation. His company earned $20,000 profit in its first year of operation. And then he landed his first big break when Ford Canada awarded him a contract to manufacture oil pumps. In 1966, he constructed his first machine shop and incorporated his company under the name Linamar, which is derived from the names of his two daughters, Linda and Nancy, uh, who are with us today, and his wife, Margaret. Fast forward five decades. Today, while it's still based in Guelph, Ontario, Linamar operates 57 manufacturing facilities in locations around the world. It is a truly global company. It employs 23,000 people who build precision metal products for a wide range of power system applications. And Linamar's Skyjack brand is a global leader of aerial work platforms and you'll see them whenever you're traveling around the globe. Publicly traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange since 1986, Linamar achieved sales of 5.2 billion in 2005, up from record sales of 4.2 billion a year before and 3.6 billion in the year prior. Frank's appreciation for the life Canada has enabled him to create for himself and his family and his strong belief in the transformative power of education have manifested themselves through a multitude of generous contributions back to the community. Hospitals, educational institutions, including universities and colleges, museums, technical institutes, community service organizations, and health research agencies across Ontario make up the long list of charities that have benefited from his families and Linamar's corporate philanthropy. In recognition of his business and philanthropic leadership, Frank has received numerous honors, including the Order of Canada. And earlier this year, he and his daughter Linda, who earned her BSc and MBA from our university and currently serves as the Chief Executive Officer of Linamar, were both inducted into the Canadian Business Hall of Fame.
With his many achievements in mind, Mr. Chancellor, and in the name of the Senate, it gives me great pleasure to ask that Weston confer the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa upon Frank Hasenfels. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, congratulations, Dr. Hassenfratz. On behalf of all assembled here today, I would now like to invite our newest alumnus, Dr. Frank Hassenfratz, to address convocation. Frank. Good morning to all of you. It's a great pleasure for me to be here today to receive this great honor. Uh, the Chancellor stole my speech. <laughs> I left it on my desk for a few minutes and it was gone. <laughs> so I haven't got much to say, but a little history first. 60 years ago, a couple of days ago was the anniversary of the Hungarian Revolution. I was in the army, I spent some time there, and then I left the country by force. When I left the country, I spent a little time in Europe, and a year later, I uh, left Europe. I left Europe, I was in northern France, Le Havre, I left Europe and I didn't know exactly where I'm going to end up. Of course, the target was the United States, but there was a boat leaving for Canada, a boat called Ascania. So I asked the sailors if I could work on it, and uh, they took me on, and I ended up in Canada. Knowing the geography, Northern Canada is the frozen north. That's where we, that's what we learned always. So my thinking was, well, it borders the United States, and of course, I'll work my way down there. As I arrived in Quebec City, an uh, immigration officer came on board and um, I applied for landed immigrant and took him five minutes and I got the landed immigrant plus five dollars. <laughs> <coughs> Just a little reminder, last year alone we paid 280 million dollars in taxes to Canada, so it's a good investment for Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it's 70 years or 69 years gone by, and guess what? I'm still here. I still didn't go to the United States. So what does that tell you? 
what he tells me, Canada is one of the greatest countries. They accept you, what you are, how you are. If you work hard, you can achieve anything in this country. And too many of us, once we live here too long, forget about it. We have opportunities like nowhere else in the world. And you, young graduates, it is an, an enormous opportunity for you in this country. I've been in many, many parts of the world, uh, from Asia to South America uh, to Europe. There is no country like this that gives you opportunities like we have in this country. And you are privileged to head your education in this country. And even if you, some of you will move out of this country, Keep in mind, you are always welcome back. And people in this country accept you what you are if you work hard, and you should work hard. I, for one, measure everything. I think you, in life you have to measure things and, and accept the changes. Changes are for everybody. And there are people who change faster than others. There are people who take advantage of those changes. And there are people who coast and happy the way uh, things are going. But think back only a few years, uh, the things that changed. And you received a great education here, but education must go on. You must keep on learning. My experience is you measure things at all times, how you're progressing, and anything you don't measure doesn't get done, and get things done on time. I keep telling uh, over the years to be on time, to do things on time is just as easy as being 10 minutes late. And uh, there is a person in this room who uh, knows I'm talking to her. <laughs> <laughs> At all times, you should have a goal. Always have a goal in the front of you. If you don't have a goal, you won't get there. You cannot be a marathon runner if you don't know where the finish line is. So always keep in mind, where is the finish line? And if you're reaching for the top of the mountain, as you climb up the mountain, as you get close to the top of the mountain, look for another one, a hill that's a little higher. Because once you get to the top of the mountain and you have no higher hill to climb. There's only one way to go, and that's downhill. And once you start going downhill, it goes faster and faster. So, change, life is change, business change, uh, and our goals should change. To the people I've worked with all the years who build our company into 24,000 employees, somebody, uh, President Obama, visited our plant in, uh, in North Carolina. So he walked through with me uh, the plant, and he said, and how many people work in this plant? I said, 50%. True, true story. Yeah. <laughs> so he got up and spoke. Uh, 
uh, to our employees, and he reminded them the other 50% should be working too. <laughs> <laughs> Again, <clears throat> I want to ma uh, mention again, to measure things is the most important thing when you're in business. You cannot go by and don't know where you're going. You have to measure things, and if you measure it, uh, if, even if you don't achieve it, you, quite often you will have to change your route but find another way to get there. But you've got to have targets and you've got to measure. For you young graduates, the most hub for me was over the years by networking, getting to know people. You get to know people and Everybody has a specialty. Some of them are good at one thing, some are good at other th things. But you should keep in touch with your classmate. It helps enormously to network. I do it all the time, even today. Sad to say most of my colleagues are gone. But I, I, I get to know new people. And networking helps you enormously. There's no way in the world you can remember everything yourself, but you should know who knows. It's not how much you know, but who knows who can help you. And you have a lot of classmates here. Keep their names and follow up, and it will be a big help to you. Again, I want to mention change. Change is, is inevitable. And don't ever think you have it made. You don't have it made. The day you think you have it made, you go downhill for sure. Grasp the opportunities. When you see an opportunity, if you're not too sure about it, ask somebody. Ask your friends, ask your classmates, ask your coworkers. Uh, to help you. Most people like to help. Most people like to show off their knowledge. So don't be shy about it. And if somebody asks you uh, for help, be ready and do help. I think that's about enough time I'm going to spend here. <laughs> In conclusion, of course, I'd like to, like to wish you all good luck, hard work, and keep in mind you can be on the best road in the world, in the best country, but if you're not moving, you're going to get run over. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Dr. Frank Hasenfratz.